मैं तो डेली यार डेली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन In the news tonight, New Zealand PM remembers fallen Fijians of Christchurch massacre. Child abuse cases increase, and prisoner care costs revealed. From the studios of FBC Subah, Jackie Smith. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, while commemorating the fallen victims of the Christchurch shooting at the Lautoka Jame Mosque, says that March 14th will always be a dark day for many families. While addressing the guests, teachers and students of Lautoka Muslim Primary School this morning, Ardern says that many families in New Zealand and Fiji suffered painful losses that will be hard to heal. Philippe Naikaso has more. The New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern says that the 14th of March will forever be entrenched in the hearts of many families in New Zealand and Fiji with pain as we approach the first anniversary of the terror attack in Christchurch. Our love goes to their family and friends and to all of you, their Muslim brothers and sisters who have been left with painful memories to this day. While I will never know your pain, I carry with me many memories from that day and the days that followed. Prime Minister Arden also says that Fiji has been with New Zealand during the terrorist attack, sending messages of hope and love. I want to place on record our deep appreciation for the many messages of support and sympathy that we received from Fiji following the March 15 attacks. It gave us strength to know that you stood in solidarity with us. And you sent those messages so swiftly. You were amongst the first. But it was especially moving to receive those messages, knowing that you faced your own grief. Jacinda Arden also met with Imam Hafiz Musa Patel's wife, Saria Bibi Patel, during the solemn event, exchanging a few words with her. I'm coming uh, to terms with my loss uh, now. And this... Uh, great uh, event I think it will help me a lot to uh, move uh, ahead also on a special visit here to the Lutoka Masjid the New Zealand Prime Minister also unveiled this particular plaque which was in memory of the three Fijians who lost their lives during the Christchurch shooting one year ago Philip and I Castle FBC News the Child Services Unit received more than a thousand cases last year, the highest recorded since 2016. Unit Assistant Director Ella Tukutukulevu says the cases included child neglect, violence against children, malnutrition and teenage pregnancy to name a few. Sanyan Boiler reports. Child Services Unit recorded a 22% increase in child cases last year compared to 838 cases in 2018. We find that uh, cases are reported every day, so that means that uh, children are either being abused, violated every day, uh, and, and also as a result of our awareness, we believe that this is why there has been uh, an increase in uh, reporting as well. Eh? Save the Children Fiji says the increase in child cases last year is a concern and should be addressed quickly. I think, you know, we will definitely, you know, um, lobby strongly to have specific, um, you know, activities to reduce um, child exploitation and abuse cases in the communities. Eh? So I think, you know, an overall action plan from the government, which, which is more multi-sectoral, including civil society engagement, is really cr crucial. Last year, the unit referred 772 cases within the ministry. 219 cases was directed to the Health Ministry, 186 cases to the Education Ministry, and 97 cases to police. 26 cases were referred to Empower Pacific, and 229 cases to Medical Service Pacific. Saini Anibuela, FBC News. The Fiji Correction Service has 2,545 individuals in their care that comprises of 1,934 convicts, 608 remandees and three detainees. Commissioner of Corrections Francis Keane highlighted that it costs $52 daily to care for each one at any one of their correctional facilities. He made the comments as part of a response on their 2016-2017 annual report to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Justice 
Justice, Law and Human Rights. Maggie Boyle reports. Head of the Corrections Service today laying out the expenses of prisoner care. It's approximately $52 per day for the three meals that we provide okay. to uh, the prisoners on a daily basis. Commissioner Keane also highlighted their recent policy changes. The importance of reintegration. Otherwise, the work in corrections is futile. That's why we changed our strategy from in-care to through-care. We're taking our abilities and efforts to the doorsteps. Committee members pressed for more insight. I note that your vision is very positive. And the vision states to effectively rehabilitate all inmates. We call it the first day process, the first week process. Is we must, for every person, that every prisoner that comes in, we must make a visit to their families. How has Fiji Correction Service complied with Mandela Rule? And, uh, and the steps and measures taken uh, to improve our facilities. 120, we comply to, to, to the, except for one that we are not, uh, not uh, complying to. So uh, in relation to prison facilities, uh, that's something uh, uh, we're trying to address. On the issue of overcrowding, the commissioner noted that there is a new correctional facility being built in Suva that will have a capacity for 600 inmates. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The three Suva High Court assessors today found 20-year-old Saul Atemu not guilty of murder. However, they did find him guilty of the lesser charge of manslaughter. Saul Atemu is alleged to have murdered tertiary student Aquila Salavuki at the Suva foreshore in May 2018. It is alleged that Temu hit Salavuki with a piece of timber, causing his death. The High Court judge will deliver his verdict tomorrow afternoon. Access to clean, safe drinking water and better road conditions topped the agenda for the Kumbalao District Council meeting in Kilaka Village this week. The lack of providing the two services was identified as a major hindrance to development plans for the district. Eleanor Tarangai View has more. All village heads, heads of land-owning units and traditional leaders of Kumbalao in Bua gathered for their annual district meeting at Kilaka Village this week. <laughs> The district meeting is mainly to discuss development for the sake of the well-being and welfare of the people here. Chief amongst the issues discussed is the lack of access to clean and safe drinking water. This includes the delay in maintenance of boreholes in several villages, the delay in delivery of water tanks, and the delay in commencement of a major water project that will benefit seven villages. We have again requested the MRD to check the boreholes and they have said they will be conducting repairs soon which should address water issues in some of the villages. We are grateful some materials of the big water project has been offloaded at one of the site. We are hoping it will start soon. As well, concerns were raised regarding the maintenance of the road to the villages of Waisa, Natokalao and Naseseibua. This road is used by our students, about 70 to 80 of them in three villages. The RSL carriers don't want to go there. We have requested over and over again for repairs, but nothing. This is a pine access road. What we have done now is to write to the FRA and tell them they can take ownership of the road so that they can maintain it. A major development earmarked for the district is the solar electrification of 29 homes in Nandibakuru village and 23 homes in Waisa village, costing a total of $197,600. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. Up ahead, social media policy still under review. And NDMO aims to reduce mortality rate during disasters. Details after the break. Radio Fiji One, Nandomo Iviti. More consultation is needed before reintroducing the social media policy into the school system. Minister for Education Rosie Akbar has clarified the policy remains on hold pending review and that when it was first implemented, there were a number of po problematic issues. Abenisa Wangarindovo reports. 
The minister says there was a major backlash, especially from parents, and that caused them to review the policy. And the policy team is still working on that. But at the end of the day, I think we should understand the, po the, the real reason why the policy was, uh, was uh, sort of made and implemented was to protect both the teachers and the students as well. Unfortunately, it was, t it was taken in a very wrong light. One area of concern was the former policy rule that teachers cannot be friends with students and their parents on social media sites. Because of these concerns, Akbar says there is need for public consultation. We intend to bring it back, but with more uh, consultation from the public. Because it affects the parents as well, it affects the students, it affects the, 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 the teachers as well. So once we complete that, I think we should be able to bring it back so that it has a more positive impact. It should be brought back because uh, no, it should be a, a guideline, it should be a protection between the teachers, the students and the parents as well. No? We should not bring back the, the policy and uh, the reason is uh, we should teach our children in the right way. This should be a sort of consultancy uh, done first before they could have reviewed the policy. The minister says once reviewed, the policy will be brought back to continue protecting teachers, students and parents. Apenisa Wangarandobu, FBC News. A 50-year-old man charged with the rape of a 27-year-old woman in Suva earlier this month made his first appearance in the Suva High Court this morning. It is alleged Abdul Muhammad Samim raped the woman after offering her food and a ride home in his car, but instead went to a house in Suva where the alleged rape occurred. The state today informed the court they have served the disclosures and requested for 14 days to file information. The defense has been ordered to file a formal bail application. The bail matter will be heard on March 16th. Over 20 representatives from the public and private sectors have been urged to take ownership of the National Disaster Risk Reduction Policy. NDMO Director Vasiti Soko says the goal of the current policy is to reduce the mortality rate in times of disasters. Josai Nanunga reports. These disaster liaison officers will spearhead every approach taken by the officers in the respective organizations before during or after a hazard. Um, work plans or actions that we as a stakeholder uh, all need to adhere to as well as take ownership. Um, saving life is the ultimate goal. That's the main aim of the DRR policy. In order to save life, we have to put in place strategies, which is why um, the existence of the officers here is to put in place those strategies uh, where everyone is committed and the ultimate goal is to reduce mortality in the event of a disaster. Having learned from past natural disasters, NDMO Senior Administrative Officer Mesake Mataitonga says the policy focuses on the integrated approach on risk reduction. An important lesson learned after tropical cyclone incident is that we need a much more robust coordination in terms of disaster management to ensure that humanitarian efforts come into the country, you know, are regulated the laws and policies in place to ensure the sovereignty of this country and also protect people in vulnerable situations during such events. Our children, our ladies, our mothers. As of this afternoon, the daily representatives from the various public and private organizations have also mapped out effective strategies to take the training of DRR trainers program at the grassroots level across the country. Jose Nunga, FBC News. The FNU College of Medicine, Nursing and Health Sciences expects to increase its involvement in health research across the region. This as the Fiji Institute of Pacific Health Research launched its five-year strategic plan to support Fiji and the Pacific. Jasaina Nunga reports. School Dean Dr. William May says the strategic plan is a significant milestone for the college as it is high time to implement innovative changes. The college is proud to represent this, to, to, sorry, to present the strategic plan for its newly endorsed Fiji Institute of Pacific Health Research. This plan sets the stage for further expansion, for greater research and innovation achievements, while positioning the college as well for a more prominent role as a national and regional advisor and resource point on key health development challenges. The initiative will strengthen the reliability of health professionals 
by providing evidence-based research on what is happening across the region. The strategic plan that you have in front of you has four main strategic or priority areas. Number one is producing a, research, uh, a high quality research environment, research dissemination and translation, research capacity development, and governance and resourcing of this research institute. So these are what will drive this five-year strategic plan. Dr. Wilson adds the strategy will also boost the confidence of the college staff who are currently are not comfortable supervising students in their respective research activities. Chosaya Nunga, FBC News. Now turning overseas, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is calling for peace after the third night of violence in the capital. At least 23 people have been killed in the clashes since last week over a new citizenship law which critics say is anti-Muslim. It's the worst violence Delhi has seen in decades. And it's business time now with Koroi. Thanks Jackie. Coming up after the break. Trade seminar aims to improve Fiji-Japan trade relations. And in growing Fiji, FNU to review accommodation policy. Stay with us. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. The trade between Fiji and Japan in 2018 amounted to approximately $428.2 million, of which Fijian exports to Japan were valued at $161.5 million. Officiating at the Japan-Fiji Trade Investment Seminar today, our Trade Minister acknowledged the strong 50-year trade bond shared by the two countries. Fiji's 2018 imports were valued at $266.6 million, resulting in a trade deficit of $105.1 million. Minister Pramila Kumar says this calls for a renewed perspective to increase our exports. Japanese investment in Fiji over the past five years has totaled approximately $4.5 million. We strongly believe there is potential to increase this further, especially with the resumption of the direct flights between Fiji and Japan. Kumar says Fiji and Japan share many economic, cultural and geographical interests, making a strong basis for enhanced trade and investment. Japan's parliamentary vice minister for foreign affairs, Norihiro Nakayama, says the second trade investment mission will continue to strengthen the two countries' trade relations. There are already over 20 Japanese companies doing some business in Fiji. Upon the resumption of the direct flight between Japan and Fiji in 2018, the number of those people who could visit Fiji from Japan have been doubled. I hope that upon this visit, uh, business to business exchanges will be deepened and expect a concrete business project as an outcome. The second trade investment mission between Fiji and Japan is aimed at setting the foundation for Fiji to move towards elimination of our trade gap. Koritandulala, FBC News. Gary from HFC Bank joins us with the latest from the stock market. Asian share markets and oil prices both slipped yesterday as the rapid global spread of the coronavirus left investors on edge and seeking safety in gold and government bonds. The virus has driven a flight of assets out of Asia as investors try to isolate themselves from both the outbreak and the cost of more than a month of paralysis in the world's second biggest economy. On the data front, New Zealand recorded a trade balance deficit of $340 million for January 2020. Overall total exports remained at high levels, rising 8.8% to reach $4.7 billion, while the value of goods imported fell 4% to $5.1 billion. In the United States, data released today showed new home sales surged to a 12-year high in January. That sector accounts for about 3.1% of GDP and is being supported by cheaper mortgage rates following the Federal Reserve interest rate cuts last year. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Minaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The coronavirus chaos continues in the world's money markets. The Fiji dollar remained on the rise against the currencies of our major trading partners, Australia and New Zealand, but slipped against the other currencies we cover. Taking a look at the commodities, the price of crude oil continued to drop at $48 per barrel. Gold was up to a new record high level of $1,649 per ounce. And silver dropped to $1,802 per ounce.
The Fiji National University says they have changed their accommodation policy this year to accommodate first-year and disabled students. Vice Chancellor Professor Nigel Healy says they had discussions with the Students Association last year about the fairest way to allocate hostel accommodation. He says up until last year, they had to turn away new students as by the time they had applied for hostel accommodation, no room was left for them. We thought we really need to look at this because these are the most vulnerable students, the ones who are coming away from home for the first time at the age of 18, 19. Um, and so in consultation with the Student Association, we came up with an allocation system that prioritises first year students. That's it from Business Tonight. Jamie Johnson now with the latest from Sports. Thanks, Corey, and good evening in Sports Tonight. Cautious approach in LA for Fiji Sevens. And Super Zone 1 starts with the bang. This and more coming up. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka, and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM. Only the classic hits. The Fiji 7 side will be gunning for maximum points this weekend to improve its World Series ranking. Fiji is currently fifth with 53 points, just a point behind fourth ranked England and three points away from third place France. While Fiji has big plans, New Zealand, on the other hand, is excited about the return of one of its best finishers. Akula Dama reports. Gareth Baber says they need to keep on improving their position on the World Series table as the Olympic Games seeding will depend on it. My thoughts uh, focus firmly on what the players need to do this week to get a win. Um, I know that if we get a win, we, we, we climb the table again. And obviously, as you've indicated, you know, that top four seeding uh, ha has implications for that should we, should we win it. Um, so that's been you know, obviously said to the boys, the players know about it. But Bieber says they can't look past the pool stages at the moment. I never look too much in advance. Uh, I look at it in relation to what we've got to do to get better and how we progress from tournament to tournament. And we came off uh, some good play in Sydney. It wasn't perfect. Um, so we're looking at things and uh, continuing our game to develop. And it's important the players stay at that standard. Positive outcome is what Beba and Fiji needs, while the All Black Sevens is just happy to have Joe Ravovo back. It's going to be some pretty tough games, but hopefully... Um, Boys do their homework and it's good to have Big Joe back. Um, missed him for a bit. Um, it's going to be good to have his speed and X Factor out on the wing and a yeah, big scary man running at you. I, I know I wouldn't want to tackle him. <laughs> the Los Angeles Sevens will kick off on Sunday. Aquila Dama, uh, FBC be, Sports. Uh, it was a great moment for the 1500 meters girls division winners at the Coca Cola Super Zone 1 athletics meet this afternoon. This is the first time the 1500 meters has been contested in different grades rather than just the open girls division which has been the norm over the years. Akula Dhamma caught up with some of the winners today and filed this report. Nomosi Secondary School dominated the 1500 meters finals but for Coca-Cola Games champion Salote Vakataombai, she is just happy to be running in her own age group compared to previous years. I'm just so happy that we will now be competing in our own grades in the 1,500 meters as now we have more space to work with, not like before when we run into each other as there was only one division which is the open girls. I'm happy about the decision. Vakataombai's teammate from Namosi, Coletta Tumbailangi, believes they didn't have enough time to prepare for the zone. But not that much uh, prepared. I'd like to thank the team managers and coaches for encouraging us team members to make an effort to have a goal this year. Echoing similar sentiments is the sub-junior girls winner from BMS who had their school inter-house less than a week ago. Just last week we had an uh, inter-house, uh, last week on Friday, then Master, Master Mbole was uh, preparing me from the Belem time ground. I was just training there. The Silver Zone 1 meet continues tomorrow from 8 a.m. and you can watch the action live and exclusive on FBC Sports Channel. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. PNG's domestic rugby league champions, the Lace Next Tigers, are in the country for the Melanesian Cup Challenge against the Rabo Rabo Rabbitohs this Saturday. 
Laced with nine PNG Kumuls rips, the Tigers are not taking this game lightly by any means. Felipe Nicasso has more. The PNG-based side arrived into the country late yesterday afternoon with an aim of maintaining their unbeaten record in Fiji. We believe in our processes and we have been training hard also. Uh, going through a process like simple things, uh, one percentage stuff, putting in the efforts. And the boys are looking forward to this match. We are not taking the uh, revitos lightly. The side is also fully aware of the pressure as they are the defending champs and taking on the Sambeto based Rebitos on home soil will not be an easy task. You know, the efforts are big, like, so we are expecting them to be, yeah, like, aggressive with us for the first 20 or 30 minutes and then we trust the boys to just come out on top of them. The Tigers will also be naming their best 17 tonight to take on the Rabbitohs. PNG has been dominating the Malaysian Cup for the past few years. And we know how, how uh, Fiji wants to prove something here now that we're playing on their own turf. They'll come out hard. The two teams will clash at 4 p.m. this Saturday at Lotokas Churchill Park. Philip and I, Kasso, FBC Sports. The 2020 Vodafone Trophy Zone quarterfinalists will determine the selection of players for the Junior Fiji Mbati Secondary School's High Performance Program. The Southeastern Zone and Western Zone quarterfinals scheduled for this Saturday are expected to see intense competition from schools targeting a spot in the national playoffs. Karlaini Tabi reports. Fiji National Rugby League Acting Chief Executive Don Tambi says rugby league competitions will create a pathway for secondary school rugby league players. The future of uh, uh, Fiji Second Schools Rugby League uh, is quite promising in the sense that we are now embarking on a junior uh, Fiji Party uh, HPO program that will begin from the school holidays. Uh, there will be uh, a pool of players that are selected from uh, the secondary schools and the Vodafone Cup competition. Natami says the increase in the number of participating schools has provided a variety of players to be chosen for the Fiji Party. Uh, the inclusion of this new school expands the reach of uh, our national selectors in terms of identifying the future party players. Fiji Secondary Schools Rugby League Vice President Naisa Dama says schools qualifying for the quarterfinals for the first time will bring a lot of competition. So we will expect the intensity of the matches to be of the uh, uh, highest standard because they are elimination matches and uh, we are so blessed this year that uh, some uh, of the unknown schools have for the first time uh, reached the quarterfinals. The winners of the quarterfinal will progress to the national quarterfinals that will be held in Gavi Park in Tavua. Karoleni Tavi, FBC Sports. Papua New Guinea's uh, light heavyweight champion John Korake who will take on Fiji's uh, Sabanada Naliva in the South Pacific Boxing Promotion this weekend, says he's here to win. With the WBF Asia Pacific and the Pro Box uh, Pacific Light Heavyweight titles on the line, the PNG champion is certain he won't go home empty-handed. Felipe Nicasso has more. PNG boxer John Korake is expecting nothing less than a win when he steps into the ring with Savannathan Oliva this Saturday. Well, I'm confident and I'm looking forward. I will win this fight, so I'm confident. Yeah. With a record of 12 wins, two losses and a draw, the PNG light heavyweight champion wants to stamp his mark in Fiji. It's, it's a late preparation, late notice, so, but it's okay. It's, 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 I'm training well. The promoters have also promised boxing fans in bar to expect fireworks in the ring. And I know both the boxers are prepared. Both of them want to win. It's for a title fight. And I hope the better guy wins. Firecrackers will be lightning. And you know, the, it's a real rumble in boxing in Fiji. Uh, we urge all, all the Fiji boxing fans to come out in big numbers. The event will be held at the A.D. Patel College ground in Bar this Saturday from 2.30 p.m. Philip and I, Kasso, FBC Sports. The Women's Inter-District Championship kicks off at Lawanga Park, Singatoka tomorrow. Hungry to defend their IDC title, Bama Singh Alliance right wing Sonia Alfred says they'll be brutal in their quest to defend their throne. 
Four players. We've been preparing ourselves. We have uh, our Fiji reps too, uh, Safin Dialoi and Chetivin Tambua. But uh, our keeper, we also have a good keeper, and our teams are really they will go. They'll be coming strong for the IBC. Lambas is in Pool B with rivals Mba, Navua and Tailevu Naita Siri. Manchester City had to come from behind to beat favourites Real Madrid 2-1 in their round of 16 first leg tie this morning. Both teams were locked at nil all till the breather. At our play of the day, Cristiano Ronaldo's Juventus were beaten by French side Lyon 1-0. In another Champions League round of 16 first leg clash this morning, the French side ran the Italian heavyweights ragged before this crucial goal arrived. That's it from Sports Tonight. Lena joins you with weather later on and in new media. Check out the latest LG Gram 17 laptop. That's coming up. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi and Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. The new media, in new media, sorry, the LG Gram 17 delivers big time convenience on the go, on the road, in the end, everywhere in between. It's an impressive level of performance and one of the world's slimmest laptops. Lena joins us now with all the latest from weather. The weather was fine across Fiji today with just a few light showers in some areas. The west was sunny and very warm today. Great if you had a day off at the beach. Eastwards from Pak Harbour to Suva, there was some early morning, early morning rain which gave way to partly sunny afternoon with scattered showers. And up north, a few early showers preceded a fine day. At sea, southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots and moderate seas. Looking at the tides, the next high tide is at 9.12 tonight, followed by a low tide at 3.27 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is at 6.04. For tomorrow, expect some sun mixed with afternoon scattered showers over the interior parts of the larger islands and the eastern shores. Tomorrow's temperatures, all centers are expected to be in the low 30s again. Looking further on to Saturday and the weekend, the warm, humid weather is, uh, and with occasional showers is expected to continue. And that's the weather, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Lena. In Fiji Pulse, we asked, what do you think about the new restrictions put in place to protect Fiji from COVID-19? I think it's good because like, it uh, prevents uh, coronavirus from spreading through our country. I think it's a good idea because uh, it's a very contagious disease and uh, it's for the safety of our citizens. I support the measures put in place by the government to help combat the spread of the virus that is affecting the whole world at the moment. I think that everyone that wants to enter our country should be screened and thoroughly checked before they are allowed to enter Fiji. I absolutely support the measures placed to help stop the spread of COVID-19, but I think the government should just stop all international movement to countries that are affected by the virus. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, meet the traveling cat who has probably visited more famous places than most people, including me. This wayfaring feline is adorable, leash-trained, and well-traveled. B60 has the details. Recapping the main stories for tonight, New Zealand PM remembers fallen Fijians of Christchurch massacre. Child abuse cases increase, and prisoner care costs revealed. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking, is Roy Krishna our best football player ever? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day comes from Bar. Doty Jr. Bella captured this beautiful sunset shot from his hometown in Nawangarua. 
And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News, our Twitter page at FBC underscore news, or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your news for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe, stay cool, good night. Toka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.